morning, everyone. Take in a deep breath of God's presence. This hour, this isn't an entertainment hour. This is a worship service. Light a candle. Take in a deep breath of God's presence and know that this is a special sacred time. It's an opportunity for you to pause in the midst of whatever is happening in your life and allow the Spirit to come to you and minister to you. And this is an opportunity for you to receive spiritual inspiration, spiritual fuel, to live out your faith in the coming week. I'm Pastor Janine Alexander from First United Methodist Church, the Copper Top. And on behalf of this church and Hope United Methodist Church and Hillside United Methodist Church, we welcome you to worship. And we are so glad to be here together with you today. We are worshiping in spirit, if not in person. Please do share this link with other people who would be benefited, blessed by being a part of worship as well. And we know that there are special events in your lives this week. For those of you who are celebrating a birthday, we wish you happy birthday. And if you're able to comment on the side of the page, please do so and, and we can wish you happy birthday. And for those of you celebrating anniversaries, we wish you a most blessed anniversary. I want you to know that I am so proud of you, so proud of the way you are being the church outside of the doors of the church. Just this week alone, this is what I have observed. People using their stimulus money to bless others. 18 people did highway cleanup, 18 full bags of trash they collected. People beautifying the parking lot gardens here at First United Methodist Church so the community can experience that this summer. Wearing masks to protect others physically and emotionally. Making and sharing masks. Hundreds of masks are being made by people in our worshiping communities. Providing money and gift cards to help and bless those in need. Staying home whenever possible, making that sacrifice so that we don't spread the virus and protect others. Calling people, texting, emailing, sending notes, grocery shopping for others, dropping treats and gifts on doorstops, being extra sensitive in what you say and how you say it, knowing that this is a very tender time for people. Providing Ruby's Pantry in our parking lot so people can get food. You are making a difference. You are being the church. Thank you so much. We encourage you to follow each of the three churches. You can follow them on their web pages and on their Facebook page. And if you have a prayer request or a need, please contact the church offices or any of the pastors or respond on the Facebook or the web page so that we can be in ministry to and with you. And there are opportunities for you this very week to get involved, to live out your faith. Give financially to your local churches, both to the operating budget to keep the ministry and mission alive and growing, and also for special giving so your church can distribute those gifts to the food shelf and chum and people in need. Make masks for the NAACP to distribute to those in need, especially the most vulnerable among us. And then it's important that you know that the Federal CARES Act had money set aside for public schools to be distributed to the school districts based on the number of low-income students they enroll. And what a wonderful, positive thing that we should be doing. And yet the Department of Education is now changing how that money will be distributed. We can let them know that we want them to focus to help those in most need. And so go to the Facebook or web page of First United Methodist Church for information and for directions about how to stand up, speak out, and take action. And now let us worship together with joy. Let us worship together with hope and expectation as we join together in the call to worship. On this Memorial Day weekend, we gather with song and praise to worship God and be reminded of the lives of beloved ones. We think of our loved ones who no longer live on this earth, but live on in our hearts and minds. On this Memorial Day weekend, we gather with song and praise to worship God and be reminded of the lives of those who have sacrificed for us. 
We think of all those who served and have served on our behalf. May we have thankful hearts. May their memories be honored and blessed. Please join in singing hymn 696, America the Beautiful, verses 1 and 3. now to a time of prayer where we have the opportunity to lift up our joys and our concerns and our thanksgivings up to God and to each other. And today I'm going to use the five finger prayer to remind us one way that we can pray. It's a prayer that we often use to teach children, but it's a good reminder for all of us of who to keep in mind as we pray. And so as you do this morning, I invite you to fold your hands and I invite you also to keep your eyes open and watch the screen as images of praying hands you will see. And those hands are from members here at Hillside that Susan Smart took photos of and put them on banners in our church to remind us to pray for each other and for the world. And so let us pray now. Fold your hands together. And we first look at our thumbs. Our thumbs are the closest to our heart. And so we pray for those closest to us, those that we love so dearly, our parents, our grandparents, sisters, brothers, close friends, cousins, aunts and uncles. We now move to our index fingers, our pointy fingers. And those fingers remind us to pray for the leaders in our community, the leaders in our church. There's so many people to remember. We pray for our pastors. We pray for our Sunday school teachers, our worship leaders, our music directors, our musicians, our lay leaders, our staff nurses. We pray for our community firemen and our policemen. We pray for all the health workers who are working so hard during this pandemic. We now look to our longest finger, our dominant finger, and that finger reminds us to pray for those in authority. And so we pray for our country's leaders. We pray for our local and state and federal governments. 
God, help our elected officials as they allocate the necessary resources to give to those who are so struggling and hurting during this pandemic. We pray for our small businesses. We pray for our schools and our kids. We pray for our graduating seniors. We pray for all those that come to your mind now. And next we move to our ring finger. That will remind us to pray for all those who are hurting, those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who are lonely and isolated, those who are hurting physically and emotionally, those who are living in fear of this virus, those who have lost jobs, those who are financially hurting and struggling. We pray for all those that come to mind. And lastly, we look at our pinky finger, the smallest finger. It will remind us to pray for ourselves. We know that God hears our spoken prayers and our unspoken prayers. And now I invite you just to pray whatever is on your heart, however you feel, what are your own needs, your own desires, your own wants. Lift those to God now. So together, we lift our hands and we ask that God would take all of these prayers, spoken and unspoken today, and seal them. Seal them in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. I hope that your Sunday is starting off to be great. I'm so glad it's time for children's time again. Remember I told you it was my favorite time. Well last week we talked about love and you guys did a really good job helping me to explain to all the adults about love. This week we're kind of talking about love again but it's a little bit different. Pastor Janine decided to preach on this scripture in Genesis and it's about a story where a man has a dream, kind of a weird dream. It's a dream where a ladder goes up to heaven and it goes down from heaven and it goes up to heaven and then down from heaven and the angels are moving and I don't know. But in the dream, God makes a promise and God says, I will always be with you, always. You can depend on me. And when I thought of that dream, I thought about another dream that I learned about when I was like 13 years old. And that dream was also about a story about how God is always with you as well. And the poem goes like this. One night when I was dreaming, along the sky, I could see scenes of my life. All my life was like a big movie in the sky. And I was walking in the movie, right, in my dream, I was walking along the beach. That's why I came to the beach today. I was walking along the beach and I could see footprints in the sand. And all along the beach, there were two sets of footprints. One belonging to me, footprints, and one set of footprints belonged to God. And because of those footprints, I knew that God was with me all the time. But then when I was thinking about my life and I was remembering I had some really sad times in my life and some really hard times in my life. And I looked at the footprints of the sand and I could only see one set of footprints. And I got kind of mad. And I was like, God, when I was having a hard time in my life, there was only one set of footprints in the sand. Why did you leave me, God? Why did you leave me when there was only one set of footprints and when I was having such a hard time? You know what God said? God said, that wasn't me leaving you. That was when I picked you up and I was carrying you. And those set of footprints that you saw in the sand, they were mine. Because that's when I was carrying you. Well, that poem, I remember all my life and I think, wow, God carries me? How is God carrying me? Well, I think who really carries me is God through people, through my parents, through my family, through my children, and they are carrying me. How do they carry me? 
They carry me. Children carry me. You guys carry me and carry the whole world with your superpowers. Did you know you have superpowers? Well, you do. You guys work for God with your superpowers. And those superpowers are smiling and laughing. Do you know when you smile at, a, at an adult, it makes their day. It makes them feel so good. When you give somebody a hug, it makes your heart all melty and it feels so great. And that is like having superpowers. And those superpowers are like being like God. Like you are helping people through loving people. You are helping people and carrying them, not really carrying them, but carrying them through laughing and giggling and smiling and drawing a picture and giving a hug. And when you're doing that, you're working for God. And I love that. So thank you for working for God. And also, keep doing that. Do it lots and lots and lots. Show people love. God is with you always and will never, never leave you. And through people, God carries you. I love you guys. Have a great day. loves me, the Bible tells me so. This morning's scripture reading is from Genesis 28, 10 through 17. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, to the south and to the north. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Please join in singing, I was there to hear your morning cry. I was there to hear your morning cry, I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child, with a faith to suit you well, in a place of light you I'll be there to guide you through the night.
it, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your morning cry, I'll be there. Today we will look at the life of Jacob from the Old Testament and we'll reflect on how God was with him in his journey and how God is with us too. Let us pray as we begin. God, as we hear your words read and shared, would you open our ears, help us hear, free us from distractions, those distractions around us and all those things running through our minds so that we can listen. Open our minds, give us a glimpse of the divine, and then speak to our souls that which we need to hear. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is part of a much larger story. I will summarize the story a bit for you, but I encourage you to read Genesis chapter 25 through 28 this week for more complete details and to see where God might speak to your heart through this story. Jacob and Esau were twin sons born to Isaac and Rebekah. The firstborn was Esau. Being firstborn brought with it significant privileges of inheritance and property, and it also brought with it a covenanted blessing by the father. When Isaac, their father, was old and was approaching death and was no longer able to see, he called for his eldest son, Esau. He told Esau to go hunting and to prepare a meal for him, and then he would give him the blessing. Rebekah, the twin's mother, was determined that the younger son, Jacob, who was her favorite son, that he received the blessing instead of Esau the eldest. And so she told Jacob to take animals from their flock. And then she made a meal so that he could go and receive the blessing intended for Esau. Jacob put on Esau's clothes and animal skins on his hands and neck so that he would both smell and feel like his brother. He then went to his father for his blessing. And Isaac was fooled. And he gave Jacob the blessing intended for Esau. Soon after Esau came in from hunting, he brought the meal that he prepared to his father, and he asked his father for his blessing. And then Isaac realized what happened, and he told Esau what Jacob had done. As you might imagine, Esau was absolutely furious with Jacob for stealing his blessing, and he decided that as soon as his father died, he would kill Jacob. When Rebekah learned what Esau was planning, she insisted that Jacob go to Haran to escape the fury of his brother. And this is where today's scripture reading comes in. Jacob has left home. He is running for his life because he is scared of his brother. And on the first night of his escape, he sleeps in the desert using a stone as a pillow. As he sleeps, he dreams of a ladder coming down from heaven to the earth. And then God speaks to him, promising to watch over him, saying, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will not leave you. When Jacob wakes up, he is filled with awe. And he proclaims, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Jacob experienced God in a profound way during a time when he had deceived his father and brother, when he had stolen and lied, when he was alone and afraid, when he was running in fear, when he had no idea what the future held for him. He saw God. He experienced God at an unexpected time and place. Can you think of times 
when you came to the realization, the Lord is in this place, even though I was not aware of it? A church friend shared with me what a difficult year this past year has been. He outlined many difficult experiences he was having, including being almost completely physically isolated during COVID-19 and a death of a family member for which they couldn't hold a proper funeral. I asked him how he was handling it all. And he said he was okay, and, and that surprised me. And then he said, you know, Pastor, I've never felt closer to God. Another friend is going through a divorce, lost her job, and is struggling financially. Our church has helped her some. She says she doesn't know what she would do without the church in her life. She said, God is closer to me than ever before. How is it? that in the midst of their very difficult circumstances, these two people see and experience God as never before. But others in similar circumstances see their problems as evidence of God not caring about them or God not even existing. A friend and I were reflecting on this question, and he told me a story. My friend never leaves his house without two things. Can you guess what they are? his keys, and his glasses. One day he got into his car and he realized that he didn't have his keys with him. So he checked his pockets and he went into the house and looked all around and finally he found his keys on the counter. And so he got back in the car and he prepared to go, but this time he realized his glasses were missing. So he searched his car and he searched his home and he couldn't find them. Eventually, he found them. Guess where? He found them on the counter right next to where his keys had been sitting. He had gotten so focused on looking for his keys that he didn't even see that his glasses were there, too. Friends, isn't the truth of the matter is that we can get so focused on our problems, our situation, our pain, our challenges, that we don't see the hope and the help and the life and the possibility that God is offering us over and over and over again in so many ways through so many people. Help is right in front of us. Hope is right there in our midst. But we become blind to the one who can offer us hope and help and healing. The Lord is present, but we are not aware of it. When we look beyond our immediate feelings and situation, don't we realize that the Lord is indeed with us? When have you recognized God's presence in unexpected times and places? God visited Jacob late one night in the middle of the desert and gave him the assurance that God was with him. And from that point on, Jacob knew that God was with him in his journey, and that made all the difference. It changed Jacob. It didn't mean that Jacob's circumstances became easier, but it did mean that Jacob knew that he had strength and spiritual protection and guidance from God no matter what happened. How easy it is for us to think that it is only when the journey is successful, the crisis averted, the dilemma solved, that we will know that God has been with us. But think of our story. God was there with Jacob when he was between one place and another, when his life was filled with uncertainty, when there were no guarantees at all except this one. God's promise to be with him. And so it is for me, in my periods of grief and stress and pain and challenge and depression, in this time of world pandemic. And so it can be for you. You see, God meets us wherever we are, assuring us that we are not alone. Think about this. God didn't meet Jacob in the temple 
And he didn't meet Jacob in a house of worship. He met Jacob in the wilderness at night. We haven't been in our houses of worship for well over two months. And yet God has met us in our online worship time, in our homes and in our relationships and everywhere we are. God has met us. And aren't we learning anew that God's presence isn't tied to a church building, that we are the church wherever we are, and we carry God's presence with us and into the world. Some of you have been asking when we will return to some form of in-person worship. Our bishop is expected to soon give us additional guidance, which may help us give a more definitive answer to that question long term. But here's where I stand on this, along with the leadership of First United Methodist Church. And I know that Pastor Cynthia and Pastor Sarah share my heart in this. I believe that there is far too much divisiveness going on in our nation and in our community. And it's causing us to be so far off the mark, it's leading us into sin. There is no need for us to be in a heated, polarized, name-calling, insult-slugging debate between the need for people to work to feed their families and support their families and the need for isolation and quarantine to keep people safe. We can find ways for people to work and interact with some others with good boundaries and safety measures. But friends, that is totally different than wanting to hang out in bars attend large gatherings, or even attend public worship. God gives us freedom, yes, but our freedom does not give us the right to put other people in peril. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23 through 24 says this. Read it with me. Some of you say we can do whatever we want to, but I tell you that not everything may be good or helpful. We should think about others and not only about ourselves. Beloved ones, our loving God calls us to treat with special care those who are vulnerable, to give extra honor to our elders, and to not lead people into temptation. A word about masks. People, please choose to wear masks. In this church, if you're in our church building, you are expected, required, to wear a mask. Masks do help others. They are actually more about protecting others than protecting ourselves. And not only do masks physically help others, but they also emotionally help people who are desperately afraid of contracting this deadly illness. We can do this even if it's uncomfortable for us, for the love of and sake of others. And we will not gather for in-person worship again in this sanctuary at First United Methodist Church until we can do so without fear of inadvertently spreading COVID-19. And we won't do so until we can offer quality in-person worship. This week I've been reading about churches who have opened up and have already had to close because they spread the disease even in their good intentions. We will continue to find ways for increased personal connections and for online worship, remembering God's promise to Jacob that God is with us wherever we are. As we travel on, let us remember the promise of God's presence, especially in those moments when we are not sure where the road is taking us next. I know that some of you, some of you are genuinely lonely, and you don't want to spend some of your last days alone without joy and companionship. Others of us, we need to think about who among us we need to reach out to who might be lonely and how we can find creative ways to safely engage them. And if you are lonely, who can you reach out to for companionship? 
And know this, you can reach out to your church and your pastor, and we will with joy find people to share the journey with you. And some of you are grieving. Remember to balance both your grief and your gratitude. Acknowledging your grief, it is very real, even as you open your eyes to blessings that are still around you. And there are some people who are struggling financially and with food scarcity. If that is you, would you do us a gift and reach out to your church, your pastor, for help? We are all part of one another, and it is a blessing when we can bless and help each other. And if you are blessed and don't have those financial challenges in this season, find ways to give to others, to help others. Your churches can help you do that as well. Please be willing to follow Jesus in sacrificing for the good of others. Please find entertainment and religious expression that doesn't spread harm. And as we do that, we recognize God in our midst. And we realize that we are not alone. The faith journey of ours has no guarantees except this one. Lo, lo, God is with us always. No matter how familiar or unfamiliar the ground we're standing on may be, no matter what difficulties or opportunities face us, no matter what exciting or painful changes we are called to make, no matter what troubles or successes we have gotten ourselves into, in the midst of it all, lo, God is with us. Like Jacob, may we proclaim in whatever circumstance, situation, or place we find ourselves, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. And may knowing that and believing that with our whole heart and soul guide us to extravagantly and sacrificially share God's love with each other and even with the world. May it be so. Amen. We have great news to share from Hope United Methodist Church. All this year we've been working hard to own and operate our own child care center. And hopefully, Hope for Kids will open in the beginning of July. We are so excited and I am so proud of our church starting a new ministry to care for children and their families in our community. If you know of anybody who might be interested or needing child care, um, we are taking applications now. Pastor Deneen spoke last Sunday about praxis. Do you remember praxis? Praxis is putting our faith into action, doing what we say we are going to do. And now is the opportunity for you to put into practice your faith. Now is the opportunity to witness to God with our prayers and our presence, our service and our witness. Now is the opportunity for you to give, to let go of the things that might hold you. It could be money. I invite you to give and receive our morning offering today. I invite you to put your money where your heart is. Will you give and receive generously today?
Please join us in singing number 261, Lord of the Dance. Love and serve God and one another. 